Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're out the range with a new product on the market by Ruger, and this is the PC Charger. It's the pistol version of their PC carbine. This thing is nearly identical to its big brother, the carbine. It just is in pistol format. It also has Ruger's new chassis system, which allows you to put a pistol grip on it. it has a 1913 style rear attachment point for braces, or if you form one it, a SIG style stock. It still has its 1913 rail milled into the top. It still maintains or retains its ability to quickly detach the barrel as well. The only real difference is that it does not have a stock and it has a much shorter barrel. And it's threaded half by 28 for use of a silencer, which you can see that we have on the pistol at the moment. And right now we're using an SB Tactical brace. Everything else on the, on the gun is factory. The SIG uh, MSR site that's on here, uh, we've had pretty good deals on these uh, that we'll post over on our Facebook page. And these are available on sale every once in a while recently for $99. So I have about two or three of these things now that I'm testing on multiple different firearms. The gun, just like its big brother, has a convertible magazine well. It'll come shipped in the box with its um, Ruger magazine adapter in it, but you'll have the Glock magazine adapter in the box, which is what we've put in here. So you'll be able to use the more common and typically less expensive Glock magazines. We didn't bring out any 17 rounders or 15 rounders. We went straight to the happy sticks. So in this video, uh, we're not gonna get into the field stripping of the gun. It requires tools to field strip it. We've already done a video on the PC carbine, so we're not gonna repeat ourselves in the PC uh, charger video by showing you the, a detailed stripping of the gun. So if you wanna see that, we'll put a link in the description down below so you can go back and watch that video that gets into the nitty gritty of how they've designed the bolt, which actually has some really cool features and how to field strip it. Again, it does require tools. So with that being said, let's load up some magazines and do a little bit of shooting with the PC charger and see how she works. This is a nine millimeter mag pump. We've used the 223 556 mag pump for about a year now. You've seen us use it here on the channel. It was kind of ironic that the guys from mag pump actually reached out to us, not knowing that we had already been using the 556 version of their product for over a year. And they wanted me to take a look at their nine millimeter and 762 by 39 pumps. So this is the nine millimeter one. It's the Pro Series. This one is compatible with Glock, Sig, Smith & Wesson, Springfield Army, Ruger, and CZ magazines. And that's accomplished by way of these little mag adapters and it ships those in the box what i like about this with the 556 one you kind of have to stack make sure the rounds are kind of horizontal to you with the nine millimeter mag pump you just dump some rounds in there take a glock magazine insert it nose down until it locks prime my shoot there a little bit and they just have a little handle over here on the side. You have this little lever, if it hangs up, just pull up on this little lever. All right, that was 20 rounds. Just a few more rounds in there to top this mag off. There you go. And from the Glock windows on the rear, I can see the magazine's full. I just pull the trigger, magazine comes out and lift it out and you have a happy stick that's full. So far, which is just today, this thing has been working great for us. It's very handy being able just to dump rounds in here and not worry about the, orienta the orientation of the round. So the gun, just like its big brother, you can move the charging handle over to the other side of the receiver by taking out a, a bolt that's holding it together, taking it off, put it in over here, tightening that bolt back down. Now you have left-handed charging, which is what I kind of prefer, but I just left it in its factory configuration for this video, and this is the first shots video. And it has a lot of similar features as to what many of us are gonna be used to already, which is the Ruger 1022. You have a safety, cross-block safety, right here in front of the trigger guard. And then just like a 1022, you have this somewhat awkward, but if you're used to the 1022, you'll be used to this bolt latch that's right behind the magazine well. So you can hit that with your finger, pull the bolt to the rear, push up on it, and that will lock the bolt to the rear 
to get it to go home, just pull back on the charging handle and let it go home. It just has a big massive bolt in there, so it's just a straight blowback gun. And it makes it for, we can't say it's heavier than other firearms in its class. We weighed this handgun against other popular handguns that are on the market that shoot nine millimeter. And we found that it's just a little bit heavier than the competitive products that are out there. All right, so let's go ahead, lock the bolt to the rear, grab a happy stick and charge it. See what we got. I think we got it zeroed. Well, it's reliable. That was 115 grain ball from Federal that we just uh, ran through the gun. That was just over 30 rounds, I believe. I believe we topped the magazine off. So uh, yeah, it seems to shoot just like its big brother. What's interesting though, despite the weight, it, um, it has kind of an abrupt recoil impulse, but yeah, so far so good. One magazine in, <laughs> let's load up some more mags. Given that the charger is really nothing more than a conventional rifle put into a chassis system. Does it offer anything that the other competitive products out there on the market that are fighting for the same space, the pistol caliber carbine space, does this thing offer anything that the other ones don't? Well, it's a little bit heavier than the other ones, but not by enough to really matter. The only thing I can come up with that makes this unique is the fact that the barrel quickly comes off the gun so you can more easily store it in something like a backpack. Its peers on the market lack this single feature. That for me is about the only thing that this offers that the competitive products that it's competing against doesn't. The ergonomics on this thing could be better, but you have a standard AR-15 type pistol grip here, but your controls are still the same as you would find either on the full size version of this or the, the, the carbine version of this, or a Ruger 1022. I mean, there's a classic American style release across block safety. But yeah, the only thing I can come up with that this thing really does differently is the fact that you can quickly disassemble it. Also, I'll note that with the pistol grip being back as far as it is and swept back as far as it is, and all the weight being in front of it with none of it being distributed back here, the gun feels awkwardly heavy in the nose and it's only exacerbated by the fact that I have a can on it. If I take the suppressor off, it still, still feels nose heavy, but not as much. And this is a small can. This is Omega 9K sized can. So we're gonna do some shooting with the gun. First of all, I have some Glock mags out here, but I also brought out some affordable options. Let's see where we go, one of my pockets. I just found these mags online. They're like 12 bucks and they're RWB magazines. So let's go ahead and do the Glock mag first. This is a standard Glock magazine. And then we'll try some of these uh, more affordable RWB mags. All right, this is one of the RWB mags. I got a little bit of spalling in my mouth. <laughs> Shoot with your mouth closed. Another RWB magazine. All right, so flawless function. That was a mix of American Eagle and LAX 115 grain ball. So far, we have pretty darn good function, perfect function out of the gun. So here, the PC charger sits with some of its peers on the marketplace. And if you take a look at the cost of this, which full MSRP is $799, its actual retail price on the street will be less than that. This is in the more affordable category line 
as compared to some of these others. And this is by no means representative of all the nine millimeter PCCs that are out there, but this gives us a good idea of where this thing falls in the price range. Now, one thing I wanna point out before I, I get into that is the fact that right out of the box, this thing comes with M-lock on its hand guard, and it comes with a hand stop right there on the bottom M-lock piece, so you can mount lights and things like that to it. Now, this thing again is $799. If we go to something like the Strybog, you're gonna find, there, this is an A1, so right now a lot of places have them on closeout because the A3 roller delayed version uh, has been approved for import, so people are trying to sell these out before the A3s come to market, but you'll find these uh, in the high sixes. I think one of the prices I saw out there was $690 for a Strybog A1. Now like the Ruger, it's just a simple straight blowback design. Gonna go ahead and do a little bit of shooting with it. Oops, shotgun hole. And see how it shoots compared to the PC charger. This thing shoots great. So uh, this is the replacement gun. The first one had some problems. This one runs like perfect, fabulously. Fabulously, so I've had no issues with it. Uh, it also comes with an M-Lock compatible handguard that is integral to the receiver. And then this is an SB tactical side folding brace. Magazines for this are moderately priced. So one of the benefits to the Ruger, aside from being able to use any SIG style folding brace because of the Picatinny rail in the rear, uh, is the fact that it has very affordable magazines out there for it. So going up the price spectrum, we get to the Scorpion Evo. Very, very popular gun. But this one is gonna be right around, the street price is gonna be closer to that $800 mark, especially if you're gonna get a brace on it. So this is going up the price scale quite a bit. Magazines, however, for this are very affordable, typically about 19 to 20 bucks. So let's do a little shooting with the Scorpion Evo. So the Scorpion Evo, now this goes back to what I was saying earlier about the charger. The grips on these set further forward and have a little bit of mass hanging out over the end so it doesn't feel as muzzle heavy as the Ruger does. The Ruger feels heavier than it really is because of that front weight bias. But um, yeah, the ergonomics on this thing suck right out of the factory. You'll definitely wanna replace this pistol grip and replace the fire controls because this gun right out of the box likes to dig itself into your knuckle of the firing finger. Now we go and take a look at something like the SP5, which is the HK MP5 civilian model, uh, and some of its, its clones. So this is gonna get you into that $2,000 price point now. And even the clones, when you can find them for sale, until PSA makes good on their promise to bring theirs to market, are all gonna be right around 1,800 bucks to $2,000 or more, like the HK SP5. But this features a roller delay system that's world-class. The recoil impulse on this is gonna be um, much more muted than the Ruger and just a cool piece of iconic history. It's also the only gun out here I don't have a red dot sight on. Wow, that thing is such a pussycat to shoot. Of the guns out here, this thing is one of the nicest in terms of recoil. Magazines, expensive, but plenty of them out there. And then last brings us to the MPX. This is gonna be the most expensive option typically out there. This one is the K model. This is the second version that Jason simply couldn't resist. So he picked up a second one to give it a try. And this is how he has it configured. Now this, like the HK, Get that to lock in there. It's not straight blowback. This one is using a gas piston system and a rotating bolt. So this has a very muted recoil impulse as well.
yeah, this thing's smoother shooting than pretty much anything else out here with the SP5 coming very, very close in terms of how smooth it is when shooting. So that gives you an idea of where this thing falls in the price spectrum and in the functionality spectrum. It has a little bit more recoil than the MP5, SP5, and the MPX. It's about on par with the Scorpion and the Strybog. A couple of other observations that we've made regarding the PC Charger. Now, the MPXK is the smallest gun that we could find out here this afternoon to compare the overall length with. Now, the MPXK has a very long brace adapter on it because its pick rail is right here. So there's a couple of inches right there on the end. And if you take a look out here out front, the barrel actually ends right here on the end of the gun, but it does come with a standard A2 type bird cage. So if you take a look at pick rail for pick rail, because this is much longer than this side folding brace, which would work on this gun. If we go pick rail to pick rail in terms of length, it's an inch and a half, maybe two inches the difference, but you are talking about a substantial price difference where you go from this to that, which is over, well over twice as expensive as the PC charger. Another thing that we noticed about the gun was that while shooting it, it was getting really hot, the hand guards. And we noticed that there's this aluminum hand guard, it's Y-shaped, and it's kind of like a V-block inside of there that the barrel sets into and is attached, looks like via screws. So there's about that much space in there that's a Y-shape, the barrel sitting down inside of, that's directly con contacting the barrel itself, so it's transmitting that heat directly to the aluminum hand guard. So this thing heats up very quickly when you're shooting it. We're right in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, panic buying, so there's not a whole lot of nine millimeter to come out here and burn this afternoon, but we did get the thing hot enough with a couple of magazine dumps to where it was very uncomfortable to hold it like this. So we did notice if it does get hot because the chassis of the firearm is polymer, you can actually grip it like this. Now, a few other things to take note of. I already mentioned that uh, you, know, you have this cross block safety, but everything else is reversible on the gun. So you can take the mag release, just unscrew this, flip it around. And you'll have a mag release over here for a left-handed shooter. The charging handle, you can move over to the other side, obviously, but there's something else very different about this gun versus the other firearms we brought out here this afternoon. This is the only one with the reciprocating charging handle. So if that's a problem for you, then that's something to take into consideration. All right, so I think that pretty much covers everything. Again, we have another PC carbine video out there. I'll put a link down below where we de de detail strip the gun, give you more information about it in that regard. So how we're gonna close out the video today is by saying it's competitively priced. It has an interesting feature set. It's a little bit awkward in handling, but aside from that, it might be pretty popular with backpackers and people that are just Ruger fans and want a PCC that's different than the other stuff that I showed you this afternoon while we're out here shooting. All right, guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best way to do that is become a Patreon supporter. There's a link right down below. If you would follow that link, see what some of the incentives are and consider becoming part of our Patreon family. Also right here on YouTube, just underneath the video player, there's a join button. Give that join button a click and consider becoming part of our YouTube membership program family right here on YouTube. And last but not least, swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Guys, thanks for 12 years of support, and we'll talk to you soon. Very light trigger too, has a fairly decent trigger on it.